The x86 encoding is quite complicated and has a lot of moving parts. In this video I'm going to describe the important aspects of each section in the encoding, starting with opcodes. Uh, opcodes define the type of instruction that is going to be performed on the processor. Opcodes and the reference values can be different for each processor architecture, but generally you can rely on most older and newer architectures to contain similar instructions like move, add, push, pop. The encoding allows for one byte and an additional two bytes if an extended opcode value is applied to the instruction prefix. An important thing to keep in mind is it's also possible for there to be many different opcodes for a single basic instruction. For example, let's say an x86 and move instruction can be defined with opcodes ranging from you know, hex 88 to hex 8c. You may ask yourself why so many different instructions for the simple task of moving a copy of data to another location. Well, the reason is actually quite simple if you think about all the possibilities. For example, am I moving this data from a register to another register? Am I moving immediate data into a register? Or am I moving some register's value to be contained at some memory address? So below I have some examples that kind of describe this. The first one is a move of you know, RSI to RDX. That would be register to register. The next one is move hex2 to RDX. That would be using immediate data. So for this third one, what we're doing here is we're using Intel syntax instead of AT&T syntax. And that's why we have to use a size directive, which is the, the, the D word pointer, that's the size directive. And then the square brackets you can think of as the same as dereferencing a pointer in C. So we're moving the value of in ESI, ESI to the memory address that's stored in uh, EDX. Then there's size of data. How do I tell the processor I only want to move the first lower byte worth of data? What if I want to move, only move the first lower four bytes of an 8-bit register? This last one is commonly interchangeably used when using you know, move ESI to EDX or move RSI to RDX or any other abstract sized registers. If EDX versus RDX is confusing right now, we will dive into this in a later video on addressing, but the important takeaway right now is RDX and EDX are the same 64-bit register, but when used in the concept, context of EDX, the move instruction opcode will resemble an instruction that will deal with the lower 32 bits of the full 64-bit register. The next section in the encoding is the mod reg RM. The mod reg RM is a pretty packed name, but is a single byte in the x86 encoding. And the usage of this byte is to describe the operands in the instruction. If you're unfamiliar with the term operand, it can be thought of parameters of an instruction. So in the instruction move RSI to RDX, RDX and RSI are both the operands. In fact, they are specifically register or direct operands. There are three different types of operands, immediate, memory, and or register. Where memory and register types are also referred as indirect and direct, you can say an operand is Im immediate when the operand is a constant, such as like hex two. You can say an operand is indirect when the operand is a memory address. This byte can be split into three parts, mode, register, and register or memory. Mode specifies the addressing mode and is made up of two bits. So the bit pattern 00 specifies indirect addressing mode and enables the SIB byte, um, which is used for some complex addressing modes uh, like scaled uh, index addressing. Um, the bit pattern 01 specifies indirect addressing mode again, uh, but with a one byte displacement. Bit pattern um, one zero specifies indirect addressing mode with a four byte or eight byte displacement, depending on the bit addressing form. The bit pattern one one specifies the 
register addressing mode. So register to register. The register part of the byte is these three bits in the middle, the orange, uh, the orange bits. Um, and it has two different roles. Um, one of the roles is to describe what is the source or destination register. Um, determining whether it is the source or destination is provided by the first bit in the encoded opcode. Um, this is commonly denoted just as the character D um, and is in an on value for this bit would indicate reg or register as the destination. If D was off, that would indicate reg as the source register. So there are three bits you can use to just specify register. For example, the RAX register would be the bit pattern 0, 0, 0. This encompasses all abstract registers. So specifying register RAX is also specifying registers AL, AX, and EAX. The other role for the reg three bits is only used when you don't have to specify a register. So in cases where one of the operands is an immediate value or when an instruction only needs one operand. Um, when these conditions are met, the reg three bits are used for the opcode um, extension that we mentioned previously. So if that prefix is uh, provided, then these uh, these three bits can be used for that. The register or memory part is the least significant uh, bits. These bits are combined with uh, the two mode bits with the order of bit significance being maintained. Uh, this makes what is called the effective address. So a mode of, you know, one one and a RM of 0, 0 would be 1100. 0, 0. The effective address is not terribly important, just defines the operand that is the memory reference. The three bits do the same as the reg bits. They define a gender purpose register. But unlike the reg bits, which are optional and can be uh, used as the extended opcode, um, we always need these, uh, these bits to define a register. The next section of the encoding is called the SIB byte. Uh, this is also called the scaled index byte and is provided when using addressing modes such as scaled index addressing. For right now, we will just discuss the basic usage of scaled index addressing. In a later video, we'll go into more depth on when to use scaled index addressing versus other addressing modes, as there are some scenarios where Using such addressing can produce uh, processor optimizations, but the SIB byte is like the mod reg RM byte. It can be split into three parts. So here we have the scale, the index, and the base. Scale is simply a two-bit value that determines what the index is going to be multiplied by. Index is the block number you're trying to find the address of. Um, in the encoding, you provide a register that holds the index value. Uh, then there is the base. This is simply another register that denotes the, the base address or starting address. Um, a, good, uh, a good example to understand the SIB byte is to think about arrays. Um, if you imagine you have, a, you have an array of eight byte sized integers in memory, you can ask yourself, like, how would you point to the third integer? So an example of this is to think about our integers um, just laid out in memory. So imagine we have three integers just in the middle of memory somewhere. And first we need the base address, which we can account for as right here. So let's say this is the base. And our next task is to point to this specific uh, integer right here and we know that our integers are eight bytes each so that would be our scale so we have eight as our scale and then we want 
integer three, so that's index of two. So that gives us 16. So that will give us the starting point of our third integer, which is right here. That does it for the sip byte. Um, the next two sections of the encoding are displacement and immediate. Um, a displacement, as we saw in previous sections, um, it's pretty much just an optional um, a, a section of the encoding that can be used when encoding a memory operand. Um, you can think of it as a, you know, a complete shift of the whole memory address. Um, we'll get into like why it's used and where it's used uh, in a later video on addressing. But for right now, just think of it as just a shift of the memory address. So the next section is immediate. And again, we've explained this before in previous sections, but immediate is pretty simple. It just holds the constant, uh, the constant value that was expressed in, you know, one of the instruction operands. Um, so like move, uh, you know, hex three to RSI, you know, the value uh, hex three would be stored in the operand or the, the immediate value. And that pretty much does it for the x86 encoding. I tried to provide an overview of the encoding while providing more detail in each section than is normally provided. I hope you found this video helpful and look out for another video on addressing that will hopefully connect some of the dots of the confusing parts. Uh, thanks for watching.